There. Now, a mouse click should get you four page down. If you got it on the keyboard, it'll get you to the next slide. Page down. There you go. Page. This is turning out to be more about Raspberry Pi than okay. field. Day. Bob, okay. thank you, but you still got to pay full price for your dues. <laughs> yeah. All right. We put this one behind us for Joe's benefit. Without any reported safety incidents, let's start now working toward making the 2016 event an even safer one for the public and ourselves. Aside from the new logo, which I don't know where that came from, it's hideous. We ended up taking it off of our poster. Anyway, aside from the new logo, we have some changes in the rules. The dates are June 25 and 26, and this year we will be setting up some of the tents and stuff up on Friday afternoon. We <coughs> talked about that. New safety wrinkles. To qualify for the 100-point safety officer bonus, First, a group must appoint a safety officer as we did last year and as if we have done this year. Second, the added wrinkle for this. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the added wrinkle for this year is the safety officer must certify in writing to all the items listed on the new safety officer checklist. The ARRL checklist includes 15 items that have to be complied with and certified in the group's supporting documentation by a written report from the safety officer. At this point, it might be a good time to remind ourselves that this checklist should also be applied in your home stations or elsewhere by making ourselves a safety officer first and operator second. This is the checklist, long, arduous. Let's take it one by one. Fuel. Fuel for a generator must be properly stored at least a few feet from the generator and not represent a trip hazard. Also, a good spot for a fire extinguisher and some safety tape to keep visitors and children away. Have fire extinguishers on hand, appropriately located. I have contacted the ABC Fire Extinguisher Company who is owned and operated by a former retired city professional firefighter. And when I told him what we were up to, he said he would be delighted to drop off two loaners for us for field day at no charge. So, the fire extinguisher should be certified to take care of any potential type fire. Fire extinguishers are labeled A for combustible solids such as paper and wood, B for flammable liquids such as gasoline and oil, C, for electrical fires, hmm. and D, for combustible metals like magnesium. I don't think we'll have any of those. Uh, carbon dioxide, CO2 extinguishers can be used to cover A, B, and C type fires, but cannot be used in confined spaces. Why? I don't, I don't hear anything. They take the air away. They displace the oxygen, which we need to survive. Accidents can happen. This checklist item includes a first aid kit suitable for minor injuries and first aid CPR and AED trained participants identified on the site. Well, fortunately we have a number of those in our membership, so we are generally well covered. Do we have an AED though? Pardon? Do we have an AED that's going to be available? There, there's one just inside the door of the 911 center. You'd have to push the button to get in. Call 911. But go through, the first two, <laughs> go through the first two access doors on the lower level, on the right-hand wall, there'll be an AED. I'll loan you one for a weekend. Very good, thank you. Oh, you're going to be there, right? Probably. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> I was counting on that. Here, here's, here's our two, two EMT trained people right here. Uh, yes, the checklist includes having a means of monitoring the weather for warnings and watches to be prepared for such ahead of the actual need. This includes having tents, antennas, and such security tied down at all times during the event. 
Such tie-downs should be placed and identified to prevent tripping. Tripping. Tent staking. Last year we employed some screw anchors and placed our tie-downs on the center line between the two ends of the tent and one front and one back or side and side, whichever the case may be. It works really well and it does not present trip hazards outside of the footprint of the tent. Antenna structures and feed lines. Temporary antenna structures should be properly secured and marked. Site secured from tripping hazards. Site is set up in a neat and orderly manner to reduce hazards. For safety, I recommend we set all our tents in a straight line with the antenna feeds coming in the back and the front open to public observation. This will eliminate the trip hazard of lines crossing pedestrian paths. For convenience, I recommend we place the information and sign in tent first to greet visitors. We could follow that with the long operating tent and place the go-to station last so we can tease them and get them interested and by the time they get to the go-to station, get them on the air. Here's a potential layout. Info tent, well, first of all, here's Route 250. Here's the 911 center here. And this year, I'm recommending we post all our stuff on the very top rise of that uh, layout. Last year, we had this, the HF station down here and at one point, some of our operators were operating with their feet in water. Up here, it's high and dry. We won't ever have any water no matter how hard it rains. So we start, people coming in from here. We start with the info tent, HF station. Uh, well, scrap that. And the go-to station. And the last is the generator operation. Any questions about that? Or suggestions, I should say. Okay. What the NIP tickets get on your go to? Yeah. What's this? It's G O T A. G -O get on the air from go to. Well, I understand go to station. Oh, I hope everybody understands that. Thank you for correcting me. For next year. Uh, too far. Come on, back up. Back up. There we go. The rest of the checklist includes. Stations and equipment properly grounded. While I'm on that subject, I call Miss Utility. Told them what we're doing, ask them to come out and identify any utility lines that uh, might come where we are driving stakes or ground rods. They came, Tom Hansen and uh, Larry and I met at the site and uh, Tom was particularly concerned about fiber optic cables. <laughs> Anybody wonder why? <laughs> he said, there's one there that if we cut it, the whole 91 center is down. So well, anyway. We'll be there. We'll be there. So. Pardon? We'll be there so we can provide it. We'll, yeah. we'll just set up and start operating for them, public service. Yeah, yeah. right. Good point. Um, so we have determined, or I should say Miss Utility has determined that we are in no way jeopardizing any underground cables whatsoever. There is an abandoned sewer line, which they recommended that we not crack for uh, odor problems, few, I don't know. Anyway, um, the next one, access to means to contact police fire rescue if needed. Well, for heaven's sakes, we're sitting in the middle of the police station. Uh, Safety officers designate a point of contact for public safety officials. Minimum risks and control hazards to ensure no injuries to the public. That should be minimized. Safety officer or designated assistant on site throughout. Well, I'm gonna have to have an assistant to man the site from say, hmm, midnight to wee hours of the morning, because I don't plan to be there. Um, Monitor participants for hydration and ensure an adequate water supply. Last year we, now what did that? I didn't touch anything. I swear I didn't. Back up, back up. 
back up. You keep going forward. You might want to get closer to the unit. I think they're running into some interference. There's so much equipment in this place that uh, there's no doubt. It's definitely backing up. Okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, this is a setup last year, and uh, it wasn't really in the pedestrian area. Our activities cut off uh, before this, but even for our own safety, can you spot a few uh, trip hazards uh, in the grass and the tripod and, and that line going down here, and gosh, I'm sure glad that wasn't my solar panel, because yeah. I had a nice solar panel. I lost it in a snowbank and stepped on it. Oh, yeah. So anyway, um, this was a great setup last year, except that we were our feet in water because we were down from the peak of the grade right there. But great setup because all the cables in the back and the open space for the public gave them free access to look over their shoulders and watch the operations. Anybody remember this? <laughs> Let's see. Well, there's only one person here. That fella, anybody recognize him? Anybody recognize him? <laughs> anyway, uh, a ham station in the mud doesn't normally mean this. However, good old Southern Savvy saved the day and put these wheels back on the pavement. Now, we do have permission to use this old access to the motel uh, in the back, particularly for bringing stuff in to load and unload. Um, we only have to worry about this when the ground is very soft. Otherwise, uh, particularly if you stay uphill, uh, you shouldn't have a problem getting in and out of here. Okay. Our go-to station. Last year, it was the biggest hit of the day. We, we've always had one, never had much action, begged people, nothing ever happened much. Last year, through the good efforts of our two co-chairmen, that thing made a big hit and we got a lot of good people on the air, created some excitement, and it was just fantastic. And I hope we can do the same thing this year. We had a couple just jogging by, and they stopped by and operated. I remember that was clear. Yeah, it was great. And of course, the information table. We uh, had our sign-in sheets here, and and our proclamations displayed, and then literature on ham radio. And was that a, a collection jar? Were we collecting? I don't think so. No, no. Yeah, I think that I was a candy jar, and it's empty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're soliciting donations for the candy jar. <laughs> the, the safety officer needs no candy. The safety officer is a type 2 diabetic, so leave the candy away from me. Okay, we ate, drank, talked, and scored points with each other as well as under the ARRL field day rules for the club. Those green vests sure stand out to ID our club members. And if you have a green vest, wear it, bring it, because they do stand out. And for the people coming in, they're just naturally drawn to somebody wearing a green vest. So you can serve as a host and answer questions and so forth if you're wearing one of our uh, Hollywood designed special communication vests. And some of us got the AWL t-shirts last year. Yeah, yeah. Mine still fits. Them. So, I'm talking to the choir, but anyway, you know when things come tumbling down, the only wires we need are the ones that put our signal on the air. No commercial power needed. And that's what field day is all about. It's demonstrating and practicing, being able to go out and set up an emergency situation and be on the air. Uh, field day is the most popular on the air event held annually in the US and Canada. On the fourth weekend of June, more than 35,000 radio amateurs gather 
with their clubs and with groups and individuals to operate from remote locations. And this Sunday, June 25 and 26, please put it on your calendar. And don't forget the 24th, Friday, Friday afternoon. We need a few uh, uh, tote that barge, lift that bale kind of people. All right, I love life and I assume you do too. So let's put safety first in all that we do. Ham shacks are hazardous places. Anybody ever defeated the interlock on a, on a uh, linear amplifier to get inside? <laughs> Anybody you know of that's not here to tell about it? Okay. Thank you. It's been fun. I'm sorry for painting. I also 